One. One. I believe we are live. Hello, folks Yay. across On the all dot. sorts Hello. of channels around the world. Everybody. Hi, Mum. Are you watching? This is the Cloudways <laughs> Mavericks, and we are live across YouTube, across Facebook, across Twitter, but not on MySpace, I'm afraid. Minute silence for, for MySpace. Today, we are joined by Akshat Chowdhury from BlogVault and from Malcare. We're going to be talking security, and he's prepared for us an amazing presentation, which I'm looking forward to watching, and he's going to be hanging out afterwards for a whole load of questions. We've got some questions prepared, but more importantly, we want to hear from you. So if you have questions, hit us up in the comments, because us Mavericks are going to be looking for those questions, and then we are going to relay them to Akshat. So if you want to be on screen, as in your little comment, etc., then please put your questions in during the presentation. Before we get crackalacking, why don't we just do a little bit of an intro from each and every one, and then I will hand over. So Akshat, could you just give us a very quick hello and who you are, and then we'll carry on around the table. Uh, hi, Lee. Hi, Peter. Hi, Yan. Uh, good to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, and hi, everyone else uh, who is uh, there on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, did we have Facebook too? Yes, yep, Facebook but not, too. But not MySpace. Not MySpace, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to all those folks. <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, I'm the founder, uh, as yeah, Lee had mentioned, I'm the founder of BlogVault and Malcare. So uh, I'm coming in from Bangalore, India, and uh, super excited to be here. Uh, awesome. BlogVault, Malcare, if you... Actually, if you're a Cloudways user, you must have seen BlogVault logo every now and then while migrating your site to, to Cloudways, VPAR, the migration, migration plugin. plugin. Yeah. Yes, the Cloudways migrator plugin is powered by uh, BlogVault. Uh, and, uh, yes, uh, Cloudways and uh, us go back a long way. Uh, and we started off as, uh, as a WordPress backup service, which we're still running and which uh, you can find at blogvault.net. And Malcare is a security product which uh, yeah, hopefully through the presentation, we'll get a little more to talk about. All right, handing awesome. it over to the uh, next to one. Jan, Jan. Yeah, um, I'm Jan, I'm the founder of WP Mastery. I host the WP Agency Summit and the Ecom Services Summit, where both of which events uh, Akshat has been a featured expert on. So I'm very proud that Akshat and I know each other for quite a long time since you first started Block Vault. So, um, just goes to show how good of relationships you can build, even though we are like 10,000 kilometers away from each other. We've been in touch for like four or five years by now. So happy to be here. Happy to have you on, Akshat, and passing it over to Pichai. Uh, just a quick one. I think it's longer than five years, Jan. You are, you, I Probably, think it's more yeah. like seven, seven years. <laughs> and we did, we did meet finally in person last year in Berlin. Yeah. Yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah, that was amazing. Nice. Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, Jan's getting older, and therefore he gets his <laughs> dates wrong. It's normal. <laughs> um, so I am Pete Chaneri, and I am a designer. And uh, I, I get uh, fixations. Like at the moment, I'm fixated with typography. I'm joking. It's not fixations. It's my interests. And I, I talk about uh, user experience a lot, and I... And I like to think that all that we do has to be based on the user. And I talk about all that a lot in my group, Design for Geeks. And I've used the Block Vault, and I thought it was a brilliant tool to use. Just so easy, so great. I really liked it. Thank Good you morning. so much. Uh, Lee, Lee, who are you? Who are you? Uh, I am Lee Matthew Jackson. I am the host of the Agency Trailblazer podcast, and I probably see the Blog Vault logo many times when I'm doing site transfers and everything else like that. So uh, thank you for looking after us. Uh, Akshat, I believe you have a presentation ready to rock and roll. So if you want to get your screen ready and give me a thumbs up, I will then put your screen on screen. All right. So I am good to go. All righty. Over to you. Uh, hi, everyone, again. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, attacks on WordPress sites and uh, what do they mean, what's going on with WordPress sites. WordPress security is always in news. And uh, sometimes, yeah, uh, sometimes in ways which we in the WordPress community would not like it to be. But 
it's uh, through this presentation, I, I wanted to cover what exactly happens when things go wrong in WordPress and why, how things go wrong when it comes to WordPress security. All right. And how, how, uh, how are the different ways WordPress sites are attacked? Okay, so let's get straight into it. Uh, and why, yes. Uh, as, uh, as Lee had mentioned, I'm the founder of Blog Vault and Malcare. You've already uh, heard about it, so I'm going to move forward. I've seen over 10,000 plus hacked sites. All right, so over, over the past few years doing Blog Vault and Malcare, I've seen over 10,000 plus hacked sites. And I wanted to start this off with a story, okay? And the story is this, this documentary, uh, a Swedish documentary called Helicopter in Nath. I, can, I cannot even pronounce it correctly. And it's about uh, this incident on 23rd September, 2009, when a helicopter lands on a money, you know, money, money room or a, almost like a bank. And there are explosions. So you have a helicopter landing on a bank. There are explosions. There are machine guns. There are caltrops. There are bombs. And millions are robbed. Right. So during this, it's it's like a it's like a Hollywood movie scene. And no 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 less. And you must be wondering how this relates to WordPress. So. We think that when WordPress site is attacked, you have this brute force attacks, you know, and you have tens of thousands of attacks happening on your site, and that's how a WordPress site gets hacked. In fact, if you uh, if you look at forums, you will see that this is a, one of the most common questions asked, where people are like, upon seeing my logs, I can see that there are thousands and thousands of XML RPC attacks. Is my site getting hacked, or is my site hacked? You have this continuous stream of login attempts, people trying to crack your password. But WordPress sites hacks are not like action pack movies. There's not. Uh, it rarely involves. Uh, it rarely involves so much noise, and uh, the hackers rarely do. Uh, you know, uh, send so many requests or tens of thousands of requests to hack a site. In fact, in our experience, less than ten percent of sites get hacked because of this reason. Rather, hackers are like snipers. They make a single request or a couple of requests, and they will attack the weakest link on your site, which are often vulnerable plugins and themes. You must have seen of every now and then you will hear of uh, plug vulnerable plugins and themes, you know, uh, getting announced. Just this week we had Just a big recently, one where yeah. a, two, a two million install ex, uh, SEO all-in-one SEO pack had a vulnerability, and you and every week on week actually you'll see this. In fact. And I was quite astounded when I looked at WP Vuln DB. There were 263 vulnerabilities in 2020 itself. And I'm sure actually since between the time I made the presentation and now there might have been another one. So it's, we are <laughs> halfway through the we are halfway through the uh, year, and uh, we have had 263 vulnerabilities. And these are only plugins. I'm not even talking about themes and uh, WordPress, which I was actually quite lazy to pick pull up the data on. But quick, quick question, Achad. What what is WP VulnDB? Just for so everybody. WP, oh yes, right. So WP VulnDB is the is the, is this uh, great website which is which keeps a track of all known WordPress vulnerabilities. So these guys meticulously uh, sit and observe news. Sometimes they do some of their own research. Though mostly they look at they uh, plug into all the top resources where people disclose vulnerabilities. And then they create a record of master record of it, which you can always look up to see if your plugin is vulnerable or not. The plug a plugin you're using on your site. So in this year itself, they have got 263, and you can imagine the scale of security issues which keep coming up, popping up on security. And hackers will exploit one of these vulnerabilities, and they will not create that much noise. Okay, so how do so I've told that hacker sites get hacked because you know, hackers are super clever. Then they find a vulnerability and they attack it with a pinpoint precision. But we'll go deeper into how do sites really get hacked. Okay. Uh, uh, so we'll before and I'm I'm going to rush through it so that I don't bog you down in the technicalities of it. 
but nonetheless this is quite interesting so there are four uh, four basic types of attacks we can think of and these are most commonly i think this is uh, not unique to wordpress but uh, again in wordpress hacks we see this quite often you have sql injection attacks where people uh, exploit uh, unprotected database access you have cross site scripting where uh, user input is not validated and uh, it, uh, it's rendered uh, in different ways i again i i think it's outside the scope to explain exactly what cross site scripting or uh, is because it's uh, it's a different topic but definitely as if you are involved with wordpress you should learn more about cross site scripting sql injection also remote code execution is where uh, you your wordpress is uh, uh, where the uh, hacker can run unauthorized code on your wordpress site and finally i call this general vulnerability where you where the, something very specific to a plugin misbehaves or it's like a bug but it causes uh, something uh, uh, an unexpected behavior or undesirable behavior which can give hackers more control than uh, they should normally get and we'll go quickly into each one of these so what i've done is i've actually taken uh, i've kept uh, uh, I made a present uh, uh, included screenshots uh, because uh, just in case our demo does not work but i have actually got a demo for each of these attacks okay and uh, we'll quickly rush through it in this case so the demos will involve so you can see a sql injection attack where we'll send a uh, sql uh, query and we'll get an output from 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 the sql query so you will you'll send a request to a site and you will see that uh, the output for it uh, for xsl attack again we'll send a specialized request and we will see and here you can see that the, the specialized request is getting uh, is translating and getting stored on the site uh, so and i'll quickly go over this presentation and get to the uh, demo but uh, anyway so remote code execution again uh, what we do is we upload as uh, a zip file some uh, uh, some unauthorized code we are uploading to the site and we can run that zip file and finally you have another a vulnerability in a plugin which lets you change the site's url and you can see that it lets you do that so uh, that's scary yeah like so just, we have, and be, a, just sorry, seeing hackers being able to change the website url that you have is is, is really scary yes sir. and you see actually in all of these four hacks are something which have happened uh, these vulnerabilities have happened in the past past two to three months so these are fairly new wow. vulnerabilities Okay. I, I think that and, is a good example. Sorry to interrupt. Just one one more thought before I forget it. I think it's a good example of th the reasoning we need to take care about security, even though we probably don't understand what's going on there. That, that that's why I'm glad we have you on because it's. Um, I, I have a quite technical background, and even I don't understand fully what goes I, on with these attacks. How 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 did they manage to do that? How <laughs> yeah. see, I don't I don't. It's beyond me. I don't understand how they yeah. got through. That, that's a discussion for after. How this do you do a SQL yeah. injection? Yeah, I shut yeah. up. Right, right, right. And it's like, these are all valid questions. And frankly, uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. This is complex stuff. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. Even the experts sometimes seem to miscommunicate, and they uh, they tend to emphasize the wrong thing. So, which is why you have people who think that they are getting this huge uh, traffic, traffic, which is obviously wrong, uh, unauthorized traffic, or, uh, or looks like malicious traffic. But that does not mean that your site is hacked or is getting hacked. But it uh, so and uh, when you see that that noise, it's almost like uh, uh, you know crying wolf, and it actually takes you away from from the real problem that might happen. Anyway, so uh, uh, and we'll come back to this screen. We'll come back to this. So I'll go quickly in doing a quick demo, okay, uh, of the hacks happening. So I'm going to use this tool called Postman, uh, which lets you easily craft requests. Okay, and uh, I'm sending it to a website, which is obviously we have hosted it. Uh, yeah, and this is a website which is not protected by anything. Okay, so this is a plain old website. Which uh, then we do the same on a cl cloud-based firewall. Okay, popular cloud-based firewall, and these are all premium versions of it. And we will run the same request on a 
a plugin based firewall again we'll see what happens when we do these requests on this uh, on these uh, on these different sites so let's run the first request it's admin ajax let's see what the body is the body shows that there is an xml uh, xss code in it right you can see this this is xss code and we run it and it returns minus 1 that actually means that the code was successful okay i thought you said exus exus when you said xss i heard exorcist Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Cross-site yeah. scripting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's actually, yeah. it's apt, isn't it? It's like the website now needs an exorcism. <laughs> okay, we have another one, which is again zero. This again means that the site plug. This is the, what request is this? Here we have uploaded a zip file to the, to the site. Okay. And uh, let me see, what is this one? And here we send a, we change the site URL. And again, this is also successful. And we'll do a SQL injection where you can see the SQL injection happening here, the request, the URL. I know it's, uh, I think on, the, on a few of your screens, it might not render well, just, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what to, yeah. We, we, the presentation might uh, contain the URL, the same URL. And when we send it, it's again successful. Okay. Brings HTML code, yeah. Yeah. Now we'll try the same thing with a cloud based firewall. Okay. So here, so the cloud based firewall let through the XSS attack. It was, it let it through. Let's look at the PHP file. So when we are uploading the zip file, the PHP file, it blocked it. Let's look at site URL. So where we are changing the site URL, it let it through. And SQL injection, it blocked it 403. You can see that the attack has okay. been blocked. So we see that a cloud-based firewall was able to block a couple of them and it uh, let through a couple of them. Okay, and we'll come back to why am I covering all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, now we look at the plugin-based firewall. So XSS attack zero. So we it, it did go through to the site. And upload file zero. Even the plugin phase firewall even let the upload file go through. So site URL. Okay, so the site URL, the one where I'm changing the site URL, you can see that it got gotten blocked. And finally you have uh, XSS attack, which the plugin plugin based firewall, uh, no, the X, uh, SQL injection plugin based firewall was able to block that too. Okay, so uh, that is a quick uh, quick overview of what happens if you try and attack sites uh, which are not protected, which are protected by different firewalls, and uh, uh, you you can see that not protected site got, the hackers go through every time they. They're able to access the site every time, whereas in other cases, they might, uh, in certain situations, the uh, firewall is protecting them. In other situations, it's not protecting them. All right. And here in the back end of it, we can see that you can see uh, it blocked two type two of the requests, but it led through two of the requests. So but the, the main point was there's no such thing as foolproof security. You have to be. You have to keep this in mind always. That while firewalls are there and they do, a, they solve a good purpose. You can see that they, they did block certain types of requests. But there's no such thing as foolproof security. And again, these firewalls have been like this is a two, two to three month. These are two to three month old hacks or vulnerabilities. So they've had the time to, uh, you know, pack in the uh, to implement newer rules, etc. And even then these vulnerabilities do go through and uh, uh, people are still able to exploit these attacks because it's very difficult to block such attacks so keep this in mind especially when it comes to securing your website there is no such thing as foolproof security and uh, uh, things will yeah site can 
can get hacked. So it's good to have good uh, good remediation strategy ready for your site. Okay. So just a quick check. Is, can, can everyone hear me? Uh, am I yep. uh, uh, audible? Yep. And, well, uh, we, we, we are just blown away by the impact that hackers can have on our website. So you make it look so easy. So I assume that there is, uh, unfortunately, plenty of information on how to hack WordPress websites online. So I, I'm just, while you're sharing this, I'm thinking of how easy it is for somebody to exploit my website and what type of special knowledge they would need to have and where they get it. So that, that's actually very easy. They don't need any special knowledge. Is actually yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, because WordPress is so popular. It's it's just a matter of hitting numbers. So you know you just keep trying it. Uh, yeah, once you, once you identify a vulnerability, in which again because of the size of the WordPress ecosystem, you are going to find more vulnerabilities here. So because of those reasons, hackers have ready-made tools easy to use to attack websites. It's uh, yeah, it's it's scary, but. Yeah. Uh, you need to observe, but it's good to understand. At least, I think the worst thing that can you can do is have your head on uh, in the sand, right? So, yeah. Uh, at least be aware and then build a strategy accordingly. I'd love to to share as well uh, from my own experience as a developer, where I've created plugins in the past and not used the default WordPress sanitation. So I've had inputs that people could, in theory, inject information into a WordPress website. And that's not done on purpose. That's just simply human error and someone who hadn't followed the standard WordPress codex um, for, you know, for the advice of, uh, for development, etc. So I did that for a personal project. And just imagine the amount of developers that are out there who... Uh, want to support the community and as they learn what their craft as they learn what they're doing they're bound to make mistakes and they will submit those mistakes into the wordpress repository so it's very easy for us to install plugins that do have these vulnerabilities um, and again that's not um, it, it's it's essentially be because of the different types of developers that we have out there and the, and people's journeys uh, and i'm hand up you know i'll put my hand up i know i've done that in the past thankfully many years ago but still it's an easy mistake to make yeah. right well, and i think I'm it, sure that, sorry go ahead sorry. no i just want to say that we've all had our sites hacked i mean um, more than once and client sites hacked and it's the scariest thing you just go oh what am i gonna do now or how do i not make it happen again in the future which is what we want to hear from you actually no, so like I said, there's no such thing as foolproof security. You should have a good no. strategy for remediation. But also, like I said, as you can see, the and again, I because of time constraints, I could not cannot go deeper into that's no. like a whole four-hour exercise, like a workshop, to talk about the different ways and uh, uh, of protecting sites and what are the challenges around it. But uh, but yeah, so uh, I I think we we need to be because websites are so valuable and so important to our clients and customers. We need to obviously take great care of it, but understand uh, even Google, and you, you saw recently, just last week, what happened with, at Twitter, right? There was this massive, uh, uh, I don't know if you, any of you uh, had a chance to look at that story, where yeah. the uh, uh, accounts of the biggest of, uh, of the world leaders. People. Yeah, the, the people with the blue tick. So like only famous big people. Yeah, and as Barack Obama. And the Amazing. likes Elon Musk and Barack Obama. So if they can, yeah. that can get hacked. And there are so I many I was just offended vectors. they didn't hack me, to be honest, because I thought I was a somebody. <laughs> <But> clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just because you're not plugged into the uh, Bitcoin ecosystem. If only, if only yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it was about Bitcoin, wasn't it? It was like, yeah. whatever you spend on Bitcoin, I will double it in solidarity mm. for coronavirus. So, and people <laughs> actually... And people, but people did send so much money to these accounts because they just yeah. believed it. It works. It really works. They made millions. That's insane. Right. And actually, this, 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 it just exposes so many aspects of it. Like today, technology is, uh, you know, it's available to everybody. But I think as human civilization, we have not caught up to the implications of using technology. So we have phones and websites and all of it and we we still a lot of us are just luddites to a great to some extent and we don't have 
we have not yet grasped the implications of managing something so complex we are st we are still so used to like trying to protect our wallets and purses and uh, and uh, stuffing uh, money in like in a, uh, in a bank or or right so the, that's the thing so th the whole concept of the uh, how security can uh, um, it needs to be managed or from a technology perspective is something which uh, i think we still have a long long way to go as a as the entire civilization and we have received we have received the super part before we had the real ability to think of the implications when you said wallet, I instinctively patted my pocket to make sure it was still there. <laughs> <laughs> that's my security system. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, 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 that's the that's the truth, right? That's how we, a lot of us just think into think about it, uh, and all of us make these mistakes. So it's, uh, we can beat ourselves up, or we can feel smart about it. But if you carefully observe it, all of us uh, have a poor security stance, one way or the other. And because security comes at a, a huge cost of uh, inconvenience, right? So, it's a, so if you want convenience, then you will let go of some security. Yeah. Either way, I think we are digressing. We'll come back to that topic, which is actually fairly interesting. Uh, but I, I have, I need to get back to the story of, uh, uh, you know, of keep, uh, you keep know, going. This, yes, of the of the uh, bank. Yeah, of actually the money i don't even know what it's called but yeah like a bank it, it got it you know it, it, a robbery, uh, it got money a, robbery bank heist bank heist, heist. it's an interesting yeah. bank heist right and we saw that uh, we expect like uh, sites also to get this massive amount of traffic and it does happen but uh, it might not lead to a hack or it might lead to a hack less than 10 percent of time but even then this attack does happen, and here I'm giving a, a number which uh, uh, which Word uh, WP Bigner, which is a famous uh, blog or uh, WordPress related site, has given this stat uh, where it received 450,000 attacks, and those 450,000 attacks still have an implication, even if they don't always lead to a hack, right? And less than 10 percent is still meaningful, meaningful numbers, so that you need to protect yourself from it. So what you have is this. 450,000 or millions of attacks or how many ever. It's not a negligible number. And these are basically what, how they're generating is not that there's a human being sitting somewhere and clicking your site million times. Uh, rather, it's, these are bots. These are automated programs which are running all over the, all over the world. And they're attacking all the sites. They, it's not that your site is it's because your site is one site is famous or popular or special is that uh, bots are attacking your site the nature of it is that they will attack anything and everything that they can see and they're like a swarm of locusts can, right? can i just can, can i ask you w one thing i don't understand is why i mean maybe leave the question for later sorry i interrupted but I just always yes, ask we'll myself, this. why bother? Why? I don't understand what the advantage is. So I'm, right, I'm, the, we'll I'm the, yeah, cool. Right, and that's a, it's a very, very, very good valid question, and we'll come to that right after this. Okay, so more than, so on many, many sites, we see that it's more than 50% of all traffic is bots. Okay, and bots are obviously of different kinds, but more than 50%. In some cases, we have seen 70% of traffic is bots. Okay, so why? So now uh, we are answering, uh, I'll answer Pichu's, Pichu's question right away. So one is they're trying to crack your passwords, right? So you will see attacks happening on XML RPC or WP login.php. And the reason why they are doing it is they're trying all combinations of passwords, right? And there are, I'm not even going into how to protect against, like uh, uh, protect your site from uh, such attacks. There are many ways of doing it. And we will talk about one way actually down, slightly down the road. The second one is we have also seen a WordPress. If you go to the comment section, which actually I've stopped going to altogether because there's so much, uh, and even a Kismet, right? It, uh, if you use a spam, anti spam plugin, you'll still see a lot of um, spam plugins in there. They're just random people create uh, 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 these bots uh, uh, submitting comments on your site. 
uh, you have web scrapers. And this is actually a touchy subject. So well, I've moved it number three because of the order in which we see the attacks happening. And sometimes it's not even an attack. They have, we have people who are scraping your website. Uh, and I'll come back to this one, OK? So I will talk about web scrapers a bit more. Hackers and scanners. So while hackers use uh, pinpoint precision, what they also do is they are always monitoring all websites to identify what's the status of the website, what is what are the vulnerabilities present. So you might so if there are 263 vulnerabilities in this year, they might be running 263 and maybe more combinations of attacks and trying to figure out get an understanding of your website so that when a vulnerability opens up, they know the websites to attack. So there are these folks doing it all the time, and then they have script kiddies, which are basically people who have identified who found some script online. They're just running it randomly, and we see this happen all the time. And unfortunately, these script kiddies, as I call them, they or actually I think it's not only me, but you'll see uh, this terminology. You'll, you'll just see that uh, people are uh, this run just random requests coming for for no good reason, and uh, they are just like bad bad scripts. Which somebody is run without without any meaning, but they will overload your site. So coming back to web scrapers, so this is another one where internet is this resource source of uh, very valuable and uh, infinite amount of data, and people are scraping it. Or you have a, a bot scraping it for different reasons. If you are running a WooCommerce store you'll, or e-commerce store, you will see that you have bots coming in trying to find. Uh, 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 trying to get the data for all the products that you're selling, what's the price you're selling it at, and doing it, if you have uh, uh, if you have inventory for it, and more, and you'll see this happening all the time. So, and then they will sell that information, they'll you know, club it all together and sell it to your competitors. These, the other one is, and then you have other bots, people doing it for research purposes, but essentially they don't add any value to you. And you will see that, uh, these bots are constantly sending traffic to your site. The next one, and which is with this one also, so you have this SEO, uh, SEO products, which help you improve your SEO ranking. So you have Ahrefs, SEMrush, SEO Moz, Majestic SEO, and a bunch of these. And what you will see is these guys are really aggressive when it comes to scraping your site or scanning your site. So top five visitors, You'll all, for almost every site, you will see them being Ahrefs and SEMrush and the others. I've, uh, these are the easy ones for me to squeeze into the screen, which is why. I, so, but uh, uh, it's not in this specific order. You'll see that these bots are very aggressive in scraping your site. And I almost bucket them as bad actors because, uh, frankly, you don't get any value from it. In fact, if you're not using these products you're directly, then most likely, uh, uh, these products, they're, they're scraping your site, putting extra load on it, and then selling that information to your competitors. So th that's just like makes things five times worse. Right? So you that have is, all of That right? is what they're doing, isn't it? That yeah, is so, what they're doing. Right. And it's so, incredible the amount of information that you, can, that you can get about someone else's site. It's incredible. Right, and if you go to use any of these tools, they'll be like, okay, yes, you are. You, you list on your competitors, and we'll tell you everything how they're getting traffic, and this is the content on the website, and all of it, and all of that yeah. information they get by scraping your website. So it uh, uh, it is uh, interesting to uh, yeah. So these are the different reasons why sites get uh, like all these bots, what they are up to, and some of it is for profit, but others are basically just random people doing random things. OK, there are some good bots like Google or Facebook. And if you're running ads, you'll have some bots related to that. And you have those things happening. But uh, uh, that's this is the nature of, uh, uh, of internet as it stands today. OK, and this is what brings us to cloud-based bot protection, and which is actually one of the big reasons why I'm here. So uh, we saw that bots take up like 50% of all requests end up being bots. And they, when the bo when bots are, uh, you know, uh, accessing your site, sometimes they are doing it through the day, 
through the month and they might be doing it slowly and steadily but all of them add up and then they take up your the resources and as you know your every website or a server has some amount of allocated resources and that resource is allocated to serve your customers right it's you don't want to allocate you don't want to use your precious resource and servers are expensive let's say uh, uh, yeah it's all it, these are expensive like exp servers tend to uh, be expensive and then you don't want to keep upgrading your servers just to help out bots in attacking your site the other thing is you also get occasionally you will get uh, very concentrated attacks where uh, people send hundreds of or thousands of requests per hour uh, trying to crack your password and these are not spaced out over the day they are very very concentrated and then at that time forget slowing down your site they will bring your site to a halt and there are different remedies for it though we have seen that almost every one of those remedies uh, while they uh, they have li uh, severe limitations so this is why we collaborated with cloudways to bring you broad protection and uh, with with the cloudways uh, broad protection which is powered by a malcare you will see that what we allow you to do is we allow you to deal with these bots in a very easy way and take the load off your site okay uh, so that uh, your site is used for uh, serving traffic to your customers and valid visitors and not to these bots okay so i'm going to do a demo and like earlier again i took screenshots just in case uh, uh, just in case uh, yeah uh, uh, things go things go bad and murphy shows his head but uh, let's That's hope fingers crossed to Yes, and I'm like I'm I yeah, I'm like a I'm like a total developer. So uh, this is how we tend to uh, you know, we tend to measure uh, CPU usage. But uh, Cloudways also makes it very easy to get CPU usage. One moment, okay. Yes, so I'm going to jump in here, and you can see CPU usage. Uh, uh, otherwise, also, yeah. Right. So I'm going to. Just bring in the data right now, and we are seeing almost 100% free usage. So the CPU is almost 100% free on the site. We have a website hosted on Cloudways, and this is not what you will see right away on your dashboard. But I've got a special access. This is going to come in very soon. We have been testing it for over a month with Cloudways, so uh, we can see that bot protection is disabled. Now on this site, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a bunch of requests in quick succession in parallel okay and this is the cpu usage you can see that there's hardly any cpu usage on on this this is when the bot protection is off all right the requests have started and you can see that the cpu usage quickly jumps to 100% we can also get uh, sorry go back here i think this 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 interface has a bit of lag Mm. because it has to fetch the data from the system but i think we should see a jump in cpu usage so it's here it's gone up to 40% from a few percentage points and okay i think there's a lag over here yeah it is but essentially you can see that it's almost 80% cpu usage and often spiking up to uh, 100% mm -hmm. okay now if i stop this CPU usage comes back to normal. Life is okay. Okay, I'm going to restart the attacks. See the CPU usage spike up, hmm. and now what I'm going to do is I am going to enable bot protection. This is edge of your seat stuff because I want to see that CPU drop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I also want. Absolutely, <laughs> we're all like. Boom, 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 boom. Literally boom, hanging. Yeah. You know how demos go, drum right? Roll, also, drum roll. Uh, how oh. live demos go? I am also equally <laughs> <laughs> hoping that the CPU drops. And actually, yes, you see the it's CPU dropping. CPU it's drop. <laughs> so the CPU did drop uh, right away. That's awesome. fortunate. Woo! Yeah. It's pure skill. Right? 
yeah, and, and the, it's still the, activated. So I think there's yes, it's I think there's a lag. That's the yeah, nature yeah. of it, and you can see that requests are getting blocked. Wow! Look at all that blocking. So we all have this, do we? We all have it. Uh, it's going to come in very Not very yet. soon. That's really by, uh, exciting. By, by this which, uh, by this weekend, you should be able to access this, and uh, uh, oh my, we can go okay. into. So for me, for the use case, now what we have is we have um, huge multi-site website setups on servers where um, a lot of our clients who are high risk get tons and tons of bot attacks because competitors want to bring them down and all that sort of stuff. And we're very often having to route through, say, security or other third-party services, which means there's a lot of support tickets that we get because we're dealing with all sorts of third-party providers. For us, what I've just seen is something that is going to save me hours for my clients if I was to move them onto one of the Cloudways servers and then just tick a box to block bot attacks. That kind of, in my head, is, is just beautiful, and I would like to cry, but I won't. <laughs> no, that's actually a good, very, very good use case around it. And, uh, well, it's costing us a fortune. We have to keep it. increasing server resource with the original provider that the clients have. Uh, and we keep saying we want to move you to Cloudways. And this is now another reason I can move them to Cloudways because their biggest problems are bot attacks. And we, and can... uh, the pro we throw money at the problem rather than solutions. Right. And you can see that you can see the blocked. So everything mm. is getting blocked away. And Fantastic. this is actually the easiest, easiest bot attack to run. Mm -hmm. uh, the system is super, uh, uh, it learns from the traffic patterns and it's intelligent and it's able to identify to great accuracy the kind of different kind of bots and handles them very, very differently. So this is, uh, this is something which we are super excited about. It's going to come in very soon. Also in case, and uh, I'm not going to go too much into like the exact product demo and, and the different capabilities, but wanted to showcase overall what it's capable of. I'm going to turn off the uh, traffic. Okay, it's turned off now and it's gone down to 2%. But this is the, so the, the, the big value over here is that your site is on your server resources are used to serve uh, your customers and not, not some bots. Okay, I'll get back to my presentation. Okay, so I had screenshots of the whole thing, attack bot protection enabled, and you see that uh, CPU usage quickly climbs down. Also, you see this attack, uh, the sim a similar graph that we saw there. We also have, as part of this, we, I told you, I spoke about how uh, uh, crack, uh, hackers are trying to crack passwords, and there are many ways of protecting, uh, protecting your site from passwords. As part of this, uh, uh, this uh, collaboration, we are also bringing in the Cloudways login protection for the Cloudways right. firewall. So in case there are other people that are trying to attack or do too many attempts for um, uh, to, uh, to try and crack your password, then they will be blocked out. And there are ways of like capture based ways to unblock, unblock such attempts. These are again smart so that uh, it adapts based on different factors. Okay, and all of this is happening. The beauty of it is, it's all of it is happening without putting load on your site. So the last thing you will worry about, actually the biggest thing you worry about is, oh, is, is you're going to slow down my site. And it's exact, it does the exact opposite. It actually uh, makes your site faster. So this is the That's end brilliant. of my uh, presentation and the demo. Hope, thankfully, they both, all the demos went well and uh, nothing blew up. Uh, at least as far as I could see. That so, was so cool. I, I see smoke over there, but that's probably not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> quick, right, quick question. Go um, ahead. We, we talked a lot about security, and you showed us some scary examples of what can happen with WordPress. What's the motivation for hackers to even target our small or relatively small websites? That's that's what we were saying earlier. Why? How? What's the advantage to to them? All right. So I'm going to keep the bot protection out of it. But hackers actually, your website, while you, it might uh, you might think it's uh, actually no one, none of us think that our websites are inconsequential. All our, our websites are super precious to us, and our businesses are based on it. So we love our websites, and yeah, we find it extremely valuable. But in the bigger context, in the bigger picture context, uh, we do think that we are. 
uh, they are small fish, right? And our website are small fish. But the thing is, uh, uh, every website is one more point for hackers to exploit. So, for example, if you if your site gets hacked, hackers are going to exploit it for SEO, which is one of the biggest reasons sites get hacked. They're going to uh, exploit it to uh, send out spam emails. So if because spam emails are the nature of it is pe people keep wanting newer resources to send spam emails from. Uh, right, otherwise, okay. because otherwise the uh, as uh, as the spammers get discovered, those e IPs get blacklisted. <laughs> so yeah. they would so, rather so, have yeah. our IPs blacklisted than theirs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is one of the big challenges if you are hosting your site, and your IP gets, uh, which is why uh, your IP your, your site is used for sending out spam emails. Your hosting provider will shut you down or give you a warning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they know that if their IP gets blacklisted, then all good emails, if you have customer emails or password reset emails, etc., those emails will cause will bounce back from. Google and or Gmail and Hotmail and other mailboxes. Yeah. So that's a big uh, that's a big concern. The, you people use the site itself to uh, to attack other websites as they use it as a vector to attack other websites. They use it to serve mal malware. So to, they will infect the your visitors' computers. They will use it to uh, they will use your website to. Uh, uh, what are those things? Fish for phishing attacks, and all, then actually the kind of attacks that happen are numerous, and every like it's uh, every drop forms the ocean. So uh, no website is too inconsequential for them for hackers. I see. So it's so, probably more a numbers game of getting as many websites as possible infected. Because I I could assume that with sending spam and uh, serving malware and stuff, there's quite a bit of money to be made for those hackers. Absolutely. So, uh, 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 it's a numbers game. It's truly, that's the right way of, that's the right, uh, that's the right terminology. It's a numbers game. And a huge amount of money, uh, a huge amount of money is, uh, is to be uh, made. They also use it, for example, to send, to sell uh, illicit drugs, to redirect. So they will also redirect your visitors to their own website. That also happens quite often. So your website, your visitors will yeah. be visiting your sure. website, and then one fine day you will see that they are visiting someone else's website. They can also use it to skim uh, credit card uh, information. You might be thinking, okay, I'm using Stripe. That data never comes to my server. But they can insert JavaScript, which actually captures the information from the browser directly, even before Stripe gets to it. Or so there are so many different ways in which uh, hackers can exploit your website that uh, it is really scary, and you need to be well, well prepared for it. I think I'm going to go back to the old-fashioned brochure through the post. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just... Sorry, I, go ahead. I just did a quick uh, Google search. Spam earns senders around seven thousand per day, seven thousand US dollars. That is. Wow. So that is propellerserum.com. I could imagine that, that it's quite a bit more today. It's from two thousand eighteen. Wow. Yes, yeah, so it's a it's a dangerous world out there, and uh, I'm going to actually get get rid of this and see you guys. Uh, yeah, we do have a good. question in from Darren. Peter, did you want to uh, throw this one in? Are you on mute? There's a couple of questions from Darren, actually. They're, they're uh, interesting. Well, uh, uh, Darren is asking, I have a feeling that Darren is not using WordPress because his first question is, will you be doing a comparison with attacks on Drupal sites? And then he's also asking whether the, the bot, the Cloudways bot firewall applies to all CMS, uh, CMSs or only WordPress sites. So they're, they're valid questions because we are WordPress people, but not everyone else is. So, uh, Darren, uh, the firewall as it stands right now is specialized for WordPress. Uh, it is... Uh, uh, it is meant for uh, WordPress sites primarily today. And actually, it only applies to WordPress sites. So as of now, we only support WordPress sites. Right. 
and uh, not uh, not other CMSs. Right. Okay. Okay. And, and Jan, I think you've got Come. one coming in as well. I think you're on mute as well. Yeah. But I've just. You're muted, Jan. <laughs> we can hear you now. There's We're a big live. difference. Oh there's yes. A, there's a big difference between not he hearing Jan and hearing Jan. There's a, definitely. <laughs> Go for it, Jan. Sorry. Yeah, good uh, voice. Cla Claire in, in the WP Master Group had a good question. If you ran WordPress as a static site, would it be more secure? Yeah, that's a really good point. Yes, and this is actually a, new, a good. Uh, this is a new trend we are seeing where uh, WordPress is uh, run as a static site. I think a, f a good friend of mine is running static. Actually, another one. I, there are a couple yeah, of other yeah. options we have seen. Yes. So. Uh, this is a, this is something interesting, and if you have a static website, it's actually secure. There's nothing can go wrong with it. But it also comes with its own challenges, like uh, st static websites. WordPress, the beauty of it is you can plug in, uh, have all these plugins, and have customers interact with your website and collect data, inputs, etc. So those limitations apply. But if you have a more of a brochure website, uh, yeah, then uh, hosting it in a static manner is not a bad idea. And it does protect you from uh, from such attacks. Um, well, before I do have another question. We do have some feedback. Wow, that is awesome. I think it's time to move all of my sites to Cloudways. We agree. Um, and then Dimitri yeah. says, hey there, thanks for the info. The bot protection, uh, will it block the usual attacks against the WP config as well? So I'm not really sure what you mean, uh, Dimitri, as to attacks against WP config. But well, if I there think are I know what he means because I've seen stuff injected into WP config, in fact, into many files inside of WordPress. But I'm guessing he means uh, those sort of hacks or where people have redirected oh. sites as well. Carry on. Uh, do, yeah. you, do you do you mean WP login, Dimitris? He could mean that as well. There's all sorts. <laughs> let's uh, let's work out as you, as I'll monitor. I'll let oh. you know. Okay, Sorry, so uh, I'm going to so we'll split it into two parts. I'm going to answer mm -hmm. the WP login one as well as the things where things get injected into WP config. So as mm -hmm. of now, as of uh, uh, in the first release, we are only talking about bot protection from you know people are sending out these bulk attacks. Uh, the WP config infection actually happens through the sniper, very pinpointed attacks. People are exploiting vulnerabilities, and that's not what we are. Uh, that's not a part of this release. Uh, as of now okay yeah, so well, that's uh, on, on that's that a very then, different so, challenge so yeah I, I thought so too so my understanding was you are doing bot protection right now so that uh, which is a traffic hog um and essentially bringing down your site because of the traffic and that for me is a massive pain point uh, but obviously being from um, malcare and the word malcare suggests that you'll also be cleaning viruses in the future or offering firewall protection or more sorts of protection are you considering doing that then with cloudways in the future is that potentially on the roadmap so uh, we right now our goal is to get this bot protection the big because we've spent months yeah. and months on it uh I think we'll, we, have, we have been collaborating, like you said, we have collaborated with uh, Cloudways. We, our collaboration with our migration plugin goes many years back. Mm. And we, uh, I, I think depending on the feedback and uh, uh, different considerations, we will be, you will see us collaborating more and more with Cloudways. Though as of now, there's, there, we don't have a fixed roadmap for it yet. No worries. And uh, uh, right, what was the other part? The WP login. WP login attacks will be blocked. So in case nice. that was that was what you uh, that's what you were intending to ask. Yeah. Yes, because that's through the extra um, element that you described as well, and you showed us the screens of. Yeah. Which is awesome. Brilliant. Lee, do you want to take David's um, uh, question? Yes, sure. Okay. Um, right. So we do have a question here as well. Let me just get the banner prepared so that we can. Uh, let, let's just enjoy this one again. Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> <It> <laughs> is. We agree. Yeah, yeah. Right, we so all I'm just going to come back to that one now and again. Yes, you should move all your sites over. <laughs> Whoops, and then this one from David is, um, uh, can this firewall be enabled on PHP custom apps? I think we have covered this, haven't we? So the bot, I'll answer this actually, if you don't mind, and then Are you here? can correct me if I'm wrong. So right now, this is bot protection and login protection for WordPress only at this point in time. So if you have a WordPress application installed on um, Cloudways, you will be able to activate this. 
please correct me if I'm wrong or give me 10, 10 points if I'm right. <laughs> no, no, you are right. And uh, I, the, the, the little part about custom app being WordPress site, I'm almost certain, but I'm not from Cloudways. I think you, you, it's best if you reach out to a Cloudways, uh, uh, Cloudways team, support team. They'll best be able to guide you on the custom app bit. I'm sure they'll comment. I'm sure they'll so, comment. So you can create a PHP custom app and then install WordPress. I tend to go for the one that um, WordPress, uh, sorry, that um, Cloudways offers because it's usually, for, especially if you're doing e-commerce and that, because usually Cloudways have created an install that is already configured to work best with their platforms. So I tend to choose those anyway. Um, I'm yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but it is worth reaching out to Cloudways support to ask that very specific question. Alrighty, well, folks, we are coming into land now. If there are any more questions, then this replay will stay live. So please do continue to ask questions. We, the Mavericks, will keep our eyes out. We will uh, reach out to Akshat as well to see if we can get those answered. Uh, so this has been fascinating. I can't wait. I've been sending emails like crazy whilst you've been talking, mate, to see if I can get on the beta because I want this right now. I'm, I'm impatient, but we're really excited to see this. Um, so Akshat, thank you so much for your time. What are the best ways that people can connect with you and then we'll go around um, each and every person to say our goodbyes uh, all right so thank you for having me I'm so yeah I'm glad to be finally on the show I like I mentioned earlier uh, as, as in the audience in the first very first one you guys stream and uh, I'm excited to to be on the other side uh, <laughs> so thank you again for ha having me here to you can people can reach out to me I am on Twitter at AKSHATC, that's my name, as you can see on the screen. And there's a C right at the end, C as in Canada. So that's my last name. So Akshat C is Twitter, my Twitter handle. You can reach out to, you can mail me at akshat at blogvault.net. And blogvault.net is where you can see my product, blogvault. And malcare.com is my other product. So M-A-L-C-A-R-E. Awesome. So Twitter, Akshat C. Follow him on Twitter and tweet him up and tell him how awesome this product looks. Picha, would you like to tell people how they can connect with you and what you have going on? Yes, the best thing is to connect with me on my Facebook group, Design for Geeks, where at the moment I am talking a lot about typography. That's what we're talking about right now. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm Lee. You can connect with me over on agencytrailblazer.com and we've left, left the best to last, Jan. <laughs> uh, you can connect with me in my Facebook group at WP Mastery and Akshat will be in there as well so if you have further questions take him in the comments below the shared uh, webinar and he'll follow up you do realize we can tell there's a bromance going on right now <laughs> we know you two are. <laughs> I'm loving it <laughs> alright folks thank you so much for joining us um, if you're watching the replay and you got this far well done uh, hit us up and tell us that you got this far and you watched the replay all that's left for us to do is to do the cheesy wave hey hey, hey. alright so it's now my power to 